right, guys. Um, we're going to be talking about Salter Hash Facts today. I just want to say thank you to uh, Carly J and Dr. Delgado for helping me with this presentation. Um, so what are the objectives? So I just want to go over a little bit about, you know, what are salt hair fractures? Why do they occur? Um, how do they really look on x-ray? Because that's how we usually diagnose it. And what's the treatment? Like, what are we going to do? Do we get ortho in wall? Do we not get ortho in wall? Do we do it ourselves? Um, so just take a clinical scenario for a moment. You know, we have a 13 year old boy. He comes in because he fell off the roof while he was playing around. Um, came in, ABCs were intact. Um, on secondary survey, the only thing we really notice is that his uh, left ankle is tender to palpation. He's unable to really bear weight on it um, and crying a lot. Um, so just to start off, like, Salter Harris factors are more specifically to children. And the reason for this is because there's a difference between adult and bo uh, adult bones and ch uh, children bones. Uh, this difference is the growth plate essentially. So whereas adults will have your, um, the diaphysis and metaphysis, the ch child will also have the epiphysis as well as the growth plate, the uh, physis. Um, these are structures are made up of mostly chondrocytes, which elongate and proliferate, causing elongation of the bone. And depending on where the fracture occurs, we can classify Salter Harris fractures into different types. Um, so just looking at it again, just reiterating, most of these are childhood fractures, and it's because this involves a growth plate, which children have, but adults don't. Um, Salter Harris fractures actually make up about like 35% of all the skeletal injuries in children, um, most commonly between the ages of 10 and 16. Um, most commonly are associated with like trauma, such as like a fall. Um, and usually you only need an x-ray to make this diagnosis. So you don't really have to go crazy with like CTs or MRIs. Um, there are some cases which I'll get to in a bit, but usually x-ray is enough. Um, and this picture here is just shows when the growth plate closes. So different bones will have different ages at which they close. Like it can be as late as 25 years with the clavicle or as early as like 14 years in the um, fibula or like 14 years with the digits here. Um, so this is a classification. Um, a lot of times people use mnemonic to remember this, Salter Harris fracture. Salter itself is the mnemonic. The S meaning straight across, as seen here. Uh, a being above type two. Uh, the L being lower or below for type three, through everything or just through the T for type uh, four, and then crush for type five here. Um, two is usually the most common fracture we'll see. Most people have probably seen them already. Five is actually the least common. Um, but it is, and it's usually often confused with type one, which I'll show when I show the images, you'll be able to see that better. Um, these are just some x-rays. The real point I want to show this is orientation matters, especially if you're using this mnemonic where you're going, you're talking about above or below. You have to be careful about where on the bone or what orientation the image is in, because you're trying to uh, look at both the metaphysis and the epiphysis. So in this situation where we were looking at it, this hand x-ray is kind of flipped. It's the opposite direction. So whereas the growth plate is here, the metaphysis is here, and then the epiphysis is here. Whereas in this foot x-ray, the uh, growth plate here, metaphysis here, and then the epiphysis here. So just keep in mind about the orientation when you're using these mnemonic for classifying what type of fracture. Um, so just to go into more detail now about a little bit of type one. Uh, so type one or the straight, the S in Salter, it occurs in about five to 7% of all Salter Harris fractures. Um, in this, the factor kind of passes through uh, like the whole way through the growth plate, but it doesn't really involve any solid bone. So it doesn't involve the metaphysis or duplicitis. So when you look at it on an extra here, what you see is kind of just like, kind of like sliding. It looks like as if the bone has just kind of shifted. So you don't see the straight um, flow of the bone outline. Um, you won't see any fragments or anything like that. Um, and usually this fracture won't occur once the growth plate has uh, fused because the growth plate doesn't exist anymore. So you won't have involved this. Um, 
usually this has very good prognosis, a really low incidence of growth disturbances. And a lot of times the only clinical finding you'll find is a like point tenderness over the growth plate or the joint. Um, moving on to type two, this is the A or above insulter. So you can see it goes through the growth plate and then moves up above into the metaphysis. Like I said, this is the most common type of fracture in about 75% of all salter high risk fractures. Um, on x-ray, you'll usually see kind of the fracture here. So you'll see the metaphysis here, the epiphysis here, and the growth plate here, and you'll see it kind of going up or above. Uh, most of the times on the x-ray, you'll see just like a triangle shaped fragment. Um, it's not really, it's not gonna involve the epiphysis at all. So you usually see it above the growth plate. Um, this also has a pretty good prognosis. And the reason is uh, because this, the chondrocytes that I was talking about that proliferate and elongate are preserved and they don't really lose their positioning in terms of the rest of the bone. Um, so type three is the below or the uh, L in Salter, where you see it goes through the growth plate and then down into uh, the epiphysis. Um, again, this, these fractures are about seven to 10% of all Salter Harris fractures. Um, the reason these are a little more concerning is because over here is usually the joint surface or the articular surface and it involves the articular surface. So on x-ray, you'll see this epiphyseal fragment right here where you have the growth plate. This is epiphysis here and you see it going below. So you'll see that and it has like a fragment. Um, it's concerning because this fragment is more so loose compared to the rest of the, uh, like if you had a, type one or type two fracture. Um, and because of that, this also has a poor prognosis compared to type one and type two. Um, it's not terrible, it's still favorable, but in this case, you actually do damage the chondrocytes um, and partly, and you'd also damage your articular joint surface as well. And that can really lead to some problems such as growth, uh, developmental um, arrest in these growth plates, um, as well as like limb shortening. Um, this is one of the fractures you may actually consider getting a CT or MRI if you're really concerned because it does involve the articular surface and joints and tissues are better seen on CTs and MRIs as opposed to just the x-ray. Um, type 4 or the T in Salter it means like through everything. So it involves the metaphysis, the growth plate, as well as the epiphysis. Um, these make up about 10% of the fractures. And... Right, so you see it right here on x-ray where you see it go through all three layers. Um, usually this factors tend to originate in the articular space. And again, like we talked about in type three factors, when it involves the articular uh, surface and the joint, it kind of has poor prognosis um, such as this. And again, it also involves the growth plate. So you're gonna have uh, damage to the chondrocytes. And again, the risk of uh, growth disturbance is relatively significant and high in these type of fractures. Um, and then type five fractures are a crush or the R in a Salter, where you kind of see the growth plate. It's just kind of like, you just don't see it anymore. Um, these are really uncommon, less than 1%. Um, the most common areas that these fractures involve are the knee or the ankle. Um, and part of the reason is because it's caused by excessive like compression and direct trauma and force, which is usually not like, you know, something that most kids will um, uh, experience. Um, because it involves the growth plate and it causes compression, you're gonna have a lot of damage to the chondrocytes. Um, this is probably the most concerning because one of the extensive damage it causes to the growth plate, but also two, because a lot of the times these type five fractures are kind of missed. Like you may look at this x-ray and over here is where you'll see like the crush or the uh, injury, or the type five fracture. But a lot of times you're going to confuse it because you might think maybe the growth plate has already closed. So you're not necessarily thinking about, you know, like is this a type five uh, Salter Harris fracture. Um, the other times, because with the crush injury, you'll also get some sliding of the uh, meta uh, metaphysis or the epiphysis. And like going back to type one Salter Harris fractures, which is what you see the sliding or the uh, 
dislocation, you're going to confuse it again as like, oh, maybe this is type one, which has a really great prognosis. So those are the main reasons why type five is uncommon. And it's also the most um, po uh, porous prognosis of all of the uh, type, uh, all the fracture types. Um, so a lot of times you're going to think about, okay, do I need ortho? Do I not need ortho? What's, what's happening? So type one, where you just see the sliding, usually you just splint and they can, patients can follow up outpatient uh, for ortho. There's no real need to consult ortho. Um, you're essentially just trying to immobilize the suspected fracture. So a splint is enough, um, you know, like cold compresses and even like uh, limiting the swelling with like NSAIDs are great for these type of fractures. Type two, uh, almost every single time I've seen type two fractures, ortho has been consulted, but ortho does not need to be consulted for these type of fractures. Uh, majority of times, closed reduction is okay with the splint or cast, depending on how severe it is. This is something we can, we as like ER doctors can do. Uh, but a lot of times I feel like we end up being like, hey, ortho, like fracture, come like do your thing. Um, type three fractures, when you get to type three, you actually do want to involve ortho. Um, and this is because of what we were talking about, how like these are poor prognosis and type three, four and five fractures. Um, and they involve the growth plate more so in damaging the chondrocytes as well as in, uh, involving the articular joints, um, which can lead to, and the reason we want to consult ortho is because a lot of these can lead to um, uh, delays or stunted um, limb growth and bone growth. So once you get there, you want to consult ortho because you may even need an open reduction depending on how severe the type three fracture is. Um, once you get to type four and type five, again, you're going to need ortho for this too. Type four, usually you may even need like open surgical reduction with like internal fixation because all the whole portion of the bone, the metaphysis and epiphysis are dislocated. Um, and type five, which is the most severe, um, you need ortho consult, uh, you're gonna need casting and you're gonna need severe uh, long-term monitoring because of how extensive the, uh, uh, how poor the prognosis could be with the um, um, limitations in uh, growth. So going back to our clinical scenario, this boy, 13 year old fell off. Um, you can see the imaging here. Um, anyone want to take a stab at what type of, what Salter Harris classification this may be? Yeah, four, it's a type four. Uh, and we can see it here, um, over here going through the growth plate. It's, and right here as well. So it involves the metaphysis, the growth plate, as well as the epiphysis. Um, so also, as I talked about earlier, like usually you're not, this is a CT, by the way, not a, just an x-ray. And like, we talked about this too, right? Like usually you're not going to get a CT or MRI unless you're thinking it may involve your uh, joint space or you're really concerned. So those would be type three, four or type five fractures. So that's another give. Um, also like treatment, I use it more so like, are we calling ortho or are we handling this ourselves? Definitely getting ortho. This is probably going to require a lot of like internal fixation or an open surgical reduction. Um, so just a little summary of the Salter Harris fracture. So when we're talking about Salter Harris fractures, we're specifically talking about what children because the growth plates haven't fused yet. Um, and then again, type one, usually all you'll see on an x-ray is like kind of like displacement of the epiphysis, really good prognosis. We can splint ourselves, no need to really get ortho console and they can just follow up outpatient. Type two, the most common Salter Harris fracture. Um, usually the, uh, the metaphysis will be fractured and usually on x-ray you'll just see kind of like a triangle shape where the fracture is. Um, good prognosis again, doesn't require ortho console. We can do it ourselves, splint or cast with like close reduction, and then they'll follow up outpatient. Um, type three, four, and five fractures, you know, uh, involve the articular surfaces or they're a little have poor prognosis because they can damage the chondrocytes and the growth plate. Um, this all three, four, and five do usually require ortho console, and sometimes you may even consider getting a CT or MRI to check the joint space. Any questions? Yeah. Right. So yeah, poor prognosis is usually like limb shortening, growth, the rest um, with the bones because the chondrocytes do get damaged. And even if they're surgical, it's still 
So yeah, they're still at higher risk, but it's better. And because usually once you have the surgical management, they're also like, there's different, like I didn't go into too much detail because of time constraints, but there's always like follow-up and with orthopedics and like how often they're follow-up. Some of them will be like within like two weeks, some are within a month. So usually they'll have closer follow-up and extended follow-up. Like for type five, you'll have follow-up for like usually up to like six months, very close follow up within like the six month period, just to make sure that the growth is still like following the chart.